my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, who is also the organizer of this interesting workshop, Roman Karasov, and he will speak about NV3 divisions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is a joint work with many people. One piece of work has been already mentioned by Arkady, and I will not mention it myself then. Uh, other uh, participants, so I mean, in this work, Arsenia Kapan, uh, Sergei Vakumov, and Sergei Kudre, uh, they also did quite something. In I, I, I may not be able to mention uh, uh, contributions of some of them, maybe, but uh, so this is some general picture. So we have several uh, papers on archive about this topic, and uh, the list of those archive links will be given in the end. Okay, so okay, so this is about the authors and co-authors. So the gen general topic, only three divisions. So if you open any paper on mathematical economics, you will see some undefined terms like you know resource, player, so division itself. Yeah. So I mean, so the, 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 this slide is devoted to such uh, undefined words, somehow. So, I mean, and uh, very quickly, we will pass to a very particular question, but uh, somehow in very general situations, we uh, consider N players, so N persons, or maybe not persons, so robots or whoever, who want to divide the resource into N parts, and we will be interested in situations when there are not N parts, but maybe a smaller number of parts will be divided among N players. Uh, so resource, what is a resource? Okay, some abstractly, this may be some pi, which we, we have a pi, we divide the pi uh, in several pieces and start to eat, mm, or maybe something else. So actually, previously, um, in joint work with uh, Arsenia Kapan, for example, we divided two-dimensional pies, and uh, but today I will mostly speak about dividing a one-dimensional pi, which is very simple, but still uh, allows some non-trivial mathematics. Okay, so the set of feasible divisions. So, okay, we, we don't want to divide it anyhow. We want to specify how we divide. For example, when in, in the problem of dividing a convex two-dimensional pi, we may ask that Okay, let me just draw some pictures. Convex to dimensional pi, we might ask that we divide it, but so that the parts are uh, in their cells convex. So for example, if we allow to divide into parts of arbitrary shape, then it will be easier and basically, I and mean, you usually no interest in mathematical problem arises this way. It, it may, but it may not arise. I would say so we uh, have some restrictions on how we divide the pi so we do not want to divide it somehow for example I mean, in two-dimensional case we do not want to have this is one set so this is somehow the other set and this is some some other set so not connected and maybe not convex and uh, very bad uh, division set so uh, somehow we try to solve some um, maybe nice formulations of the problems when the sets are convex, for example. Okay, so, and uh, actually I, I will comment on it uh, later. There is one more, one more slide about this, but uh, okay, so how we, so we may call it a game or not, I don't know, how, how we play this game. So if we uh, have a certain scheme to divide, for example, like, okay, I have already drawn this picture, but so we just uh, present this, a particular division uh, of this pi to the players and each player uh, may prefer some piece. So for example, prefer I prefer this one and uh, again, I prefer this one or maybe I also prefer this one because a player may prefer not one piece, but several pieces at least. Of course, the common requirement that in every such scheme to partition the pie, every player prefers something. I mean, uh, somehow, uh, or otherwise, so we take, it is easy to give examples when the problem has no solution at all. So, 
Okay, what is the problem? Uh, and the problem is to have a division such that one player receives one part or maybe zero parts of this will be one or new result somehow. So but in, so in, in a simple yeah, statement, every, uh, every player receives one part and uh, every player has no envy, mean, meaning that every player has received the part which this player prefers in this particular division scheme or one of such parts that a player prefers. Okay, so this is very general. Okay, this is okay. This is an, uh, another slide about uh, the example and the plane, which I I have already drawn pictures about. Uh, so, for example, actually, one example of the problem which is addressed in one of our publications is such that we have a convex pi. So the space of all possible partitions is not all possible partitions, but partitions some reasonable partitions. So the pi is divided so that the areas of the parts are equal. So I don't know if I if I'm able to do so, but so what I, I pretend that the areas are equal. So we only consider that the divisions of uh, a convex pi into convex parts. And we only consider such divisions where the area is already equal. So somehow you may consider that there's uh, somebody is judging, no, 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 not the player, but somebody is judging that the areas must be equal and nothing else allowed. In this case, we obtain some rather non-trivial space of possible ways to divide the pi and. Uh, Actually, we have in, in one of our, even in, in the paper with no my participation by Avakumov and Kudra, they actually solve some particular case of such problem. They prove that it is possible to divide uh, into certain number of parts of equal area and give one part to one player so that all players are satisfied. Okay, so we have such a result also, but I, I will mostly I will mostly address the even simpler question. Uh, okay, so here the again some general formulations. Okay, I will also spend some time on the slide. Uh, so what we assume we want to apply topology, and then we assume that uh, P of X is a sort of topological space. Because otherwise, okay, otherwise, okay, people from mathematical logic or maybe something else may have their own uh, partitions in equal parts, I don't know, not from some combinatorial or whatever, but we are doing topology here. So we assume that all, all the ways to partition is a, topo is a certain topological space. You will see uh, in the example that the, the, it will be a very simple topological space, in fact. Okay. Uh, in this topological space, we may consider subsets. Subsets, uh, the, the subsets, they correspond to the configurations where a player number i uh, prefers, I mean, not, not prefers, likes, maybe likes, I mean, so would be satisfied to get the piece number j. Meaning that, uh, of course, here we assume also that the pieces of the partition are labeled. So uh, somehow the players have numbers 1 to n, and the pieces, if we consider a partition, so for example, like I draw it once again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So for example, there are labels on the parts so that somehow we distinguish between the parts. It means that, OK, it actually means that Px is not a, only a topological space, but it also has some group action which allows to uh, use some interesting topology. Uh, and uh, this subset means that uh, player number i takes, num takes piece number j and is satisfied in this particular situation. So because it's some set of situations, set of ways to partition like this. Uh, so that this assumption given here means that basically means that uh, every player in every situation would be satisfied with uh, at least one of the piece, pieces. Okay, this is natural because otherwise I don't know what to do in many, in, in many situations. Okay, so 
a division or position or division okay is envy free if it matches uh, players with pieces they like so i mean it may be now stated more or less mathematically we need a permutation such that this uh, configuration belongs to the set i sigma i it basically means that if player i is given part labeled by sigma of i then this player is satisfied or otherwise okay it is also well, uh, well we may actually drop out this point and say that the intersection of those sets is not empty and a point is selected from this intersection afterwards okay so this is how we um, uh, this is more, more or less i mean for, for, for first of all it uh, somehow gives some mathematical statement and also it gives already some hints how people prove such results okay now we are going to uh, to divide segment into several parts this is so th this somewhat easier question i mean it may seem easy question but you will see that there are some mathematics and, and non some non trivial ideas and and as usual, as it, it usually happens such a, as a question in mathematical economics, it has no single mathematical problem somehow behind, and uh, that there can be many versions and even different answers for different versions of the problem. So we just we partition a line segment. You may imagine that this line segment is a one-dimensional thing, but it is not uniform. So because if it is somehow if this is a segment of a wire, of a segment of a, you know, of a line, or whatever. I mean, uh, in practice, you just cut it into equal parts and you are done with it. But we assume this segment is not uniform, so it's somehow something, I don't know, is distributed over this segment, some, you know, interesting things or whatever. And so somehow to take this part of the segment and to take this part of the segment is not the same. I mean, by some uh, general reasons. So it is one dimensional, but uh, somehow it is not trivial in the sense that different uh, parts of this segment uh, may be really different from the point of view of the players. And okay, so so there arises some problem in fact, but no, no, not a trivial one. So the, the set of divisions now, this is, the set of partitions into n or less so or less is interesting here because i mean at least in the case of the segment it allows to play with the statement of the problem and somehow see some new pro new mathematical problems and uh, to apply our topology which we like to apply uh, to such kind of problems so because okay you may for example even if you have two players then you may just split a segment in two segments. Uh, but uh, if you go to the limit, so the left segment is big, the right segment is small. And in the end, you, in the limit, you have only one segment. And the other segment is somewhat degenerate. So the segment consisting of one point is now called degenerate. Uh, but uh, OK, if we apply topology, it may, it usually happens that we need a compact space of uh, compact space I mean in, in place of this and uh, we, we will have to go to the limit and uh, eventually such configurations uh, will appear if we if we, uh, if we want to <laughs> a problem to be stated so, so that uh, mathem some mathematics apply uh, can, can apply okay. So, okay, this is what I already told. And uh, so how the players differ and uh, how the players rate the parts uh, in general, uh, okay, this, this will be also some, somewhat described on, this, uh, on the next slide. Uh, the closed data assumptions, well, okay, this is, uh, I didn't comment on. So those sets, I mean, in order to apply topology, we usually assume all of the sets are closed. Or, this is a different version, all of the sets are open. All of, of course, you, you may, again, look at the uh, work in some kind of mathematical economics and 
uh, see those funny explanations of why all the sets are closed or maybe why all the sets are open or maybe both explanations were at the same time. Well, which is okay. I, I, I just say this is this has no no real world explanations. This is only a, a kind of uh, mathematical technical assumption which allows us to prove something. If we have no such, then okay, then those uh, topological spaces are just sets, and uh, so it, this may be a different problem and uh, with no solution at all. Okay, so open or closed is uh, is used in the proof, and actually it is possible. Okay, I, I will I will show you one example. It is possible to quickly rule out. I mean the possibility to have no assumption at all. Uh, and also the degenerate segments are uh, what I've shown you. So in three parts, for example, we may go to the limit and this, there has been a segment there, but it degenerates to one point. And we have also an assumption that mm, uh, actually we will consider the situation when a player receives such degenerate segment or no segment at all, because I mean, in practice, degenerate segment is just nothing. And our basic assumption, which 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 will be heavily used, is that all those degenerate segments are the same for any player. So any player raise any degenerate segment equally. And all uh, and, and moreover, we, we may also say that. All those degenerate segments are just like empty set for any player. So if uh, the player uses some function, or n well, this is also a function because somehow this set A may be considered, may be viewed through its characteristic function, and we may say that okay, this function, uh, if we put into this function, for example, empty empty set or a degenerate segment, then it produces the same output. So all uh, the players are rate, uh, are rate in the degenerate or empty segment similarly. Actually, uh, okay, the, 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 this is the slide. Uh, if, if somebody has already seen this kind of talk, because I was given this kind of talk several times, uh, seminars, and the, the, this is a new slide, because I want to comment that actually, there are many mathematical problems behind this general idea because uh, the preferences of the players may be uh, considered differently. So for first one, the first one is when there is uh, there exists a certain utility function, a well-defined function, which usually continues. I don't I, I don't write the word continuous here, but in topology we will use continuous functions anyhow. There exists a utility function which rates every subsegment. So for so this is our basic segments, the big one, and for every small segment, this function just outputs a number. So f of this function is a number. So this is some absolute value of this segment. And uh, in this case, it may happen that every player knows this function and every player wants to have a part which has this function maximum in this partition. So we partition the segment. Maybe some parts are empty, by the way. We partition the segment into n parts, some possibly empty. And uh, for example, player just evaluates this function on every segment, so obtains numbers and chooses the maximal. So for example, this one. And, uh, OK, in this case, actually, the players do not do not play in fact uh, there is only one function and we want to equipartition the segment from the point of view of this one single function this is okay this this may seem very easy but actually it is not because if this function may take zero or negative values okay assume assume this function is not that stupid this function for example of a degenerate segment is over zero you just normalize it. I told you that all degenerate segments are the same from the point of view of any player. So uh, saying about the function, we may just uh, assume that this function is zero on such degenerate segments. 
but if this function on other segments, for example, or on some segment, it may be even negative. Okay, we do not exclude this situation. And in this case, some player may say, okay, if, if, if we present a partition and for example, some segments are degenerate, degenerate to one point in this partition, then a player may prefer degenerate segment or maybe in our statement, degenerate segment and empty set is the same. So player just prefers to take nothing. If on the rest, on non-degenerate segment, this function becomes negative. Then the player will ask uh, to give uh, to give him sort of empty set in this situation. And uh, okay, so and, and this is uh, if this uh, function may be zero on degenerate segments and negative. Otherwise, then when the players want to optimize it to take the maximal, then, uh, well, one has to partition the segment into n parts, which some of them degenerate, and such that this function is equal on all the parts. And this is already a mathematical problem, and this problem is addressed in our joint paper with Sergei Avakumov separately. Actually, this paper is now under, under revision, and we are going to rewrite it once again. Okay, but uh, th th this is a problem which has, which also it is it is non-trivial and it has a solution. Okay, this problem, the, the second case has no solution. In fact, I mean, has no general solution. Yeah, there are open questions. So the same as in the previous case. So every uh, but every player uses his or her own function. So every player has a viewpoint and uh, from player's viewpoint there exists a function now functions are different and every player just evaluates uh, the function and uh, chooses the maximum value of the function again if uh, if this those functions satisfy some normalization that is zero for the degenerate segments then there are two cases if all if those functions are no negative then this is done by the old theorem of david gale which i will briefly show you but if the functions are allowed to be negative or positive then uh, this second kind of question is still open it is not, not not all the time open but it is open for let me say open for n not a prime power so prime powers and not prime powers will play some role here yeah we will see at least on the level of statements so the, 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 in the second statement, there uh, remains some, some mathematics to do. Okay, we actually use some sort of crazy preferences mostly. So what, 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 are, what does it mean? I mean that, okay, so those sets, for the preference sets, okay, I was already listing some kind of, okay, this, let's say closed or open, this is some artificial assumption, but we use it and this kind of assumption and a player somehow agrees to take one part of the segment. Maybe it is a degenerate part, so empty set, and nothing else basically. And such preference, such crazy preferences, uh, may may be really crazy. For example, uh, for example, there are some two segments, A, B, C, D. They're disjoint, and for example, and the player cannot decide if uh, the player wants to take this one or this one, unless the player knows how the rest is partitioned. So it means, I, I mean that it may happen that uh, the preference of the first segment over the second or the second over the first may differ uh, depending on how the rest of the segment is partitioned. So somehow this, the par partition and the rest uh, may also play some role to the player. Okay. I. I I would call such preferences crazy. Okay, it, we may say it, it, it does not happen in the real world, uh, and we may be right. But uh, I only I, I only somehow emphasize this because we actually have counterexamples in in one work of Sergei Vakumov and myself. We had counterexamples to this kind of problem, but this counterexample. Our counterexample, it works when the number of player is not a prime power first, 
as usual. I mean, as usual compared to the previous case where it is open. And in this counter example, we somehow the players, all the players have the same preference, by the way, but this preference is rather crazy. It may be like this one. So I, I must say that in between, so somewhere here, so already on the second version, yeah, there are there remain open questions, and maybe in between the second and the third one, there also remain some uh, more or some less crazy assumptions on the preferences. Maybe maybe not that ordered as a player has a function, but maybe uh, uh, some. No, no, not that reasonable, but not, not, not so crazy somehow, because I, I somehow list three versions here, but th there may be a variety of versions in between, at least in between this one and this one. And uh, so there, you may somehow use your imagination and uh, find new problems. And, but the, the, only, the, the only thing to do is to have a mathematical formulation and to solve the problem then after that. So I, 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 I want to emphasize that uh, somehow people consider some problems, but not all, uh, maybe not all problems and not all reasonable assumptions are considered and they remain. There is a, somehow quite a big field uh, for mathematicians to apply some topology or something else. Okay, now we go to classical results. So. Okay, I have spent quite some time on advertising the, the, the general setting. Now I want to just to present some results and maybe to show some new results of, of mine and my co-authors. So the classical results uh, basically goes back to the theorem of David Gale under additional assumptions. So first, Gale, Gale allows the, the, this kind of crazy preferences. That's okay for Gale. And also, Gale, but Gale has another restriction that something is better than nothing. It means that if we have a partition, so we have, for example, four players, but our partition of the segment has three non-degenerate segments and one segment is degenerate, so somehow it is hidden here, for example. So, okay, you will see when we start parameterizing the set of partitions. So, so some segments are degenerate, it may happen that a player prefers a degenerate segment, and actually, the new work mostly consists in considering this case when a player may prefer a degenerate segment. But the old work, the old theorem, not quite old, but okay, I was I was born by that time. Okay, such a relatively old theorem of David Gale says that if no player prefers an empty part. So if a player is presented and the, there is a choice of an empty part, then the player usually always prefers a non-empty part. In this case, there is always a positive solution. There is a way to partition the segment. All, all parts will be non-empty, of course, because of this assumption. And uh, uh, every part goes to a player. So this goes to the first one, two, three, two, five, four. So distribute the parts between players, and all players will be satisfied. This somehow uh, the, 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 this is a maybe not that uh, complicated result, but somehow this is still some not non-trivial non result, and uh, it gives a positive application of top, of, top, of some simple topology, some mathematics to economical questions, and it is very well known. An exercise I, I hear, okay, this is not a seminar talk, this is a conference talk, so I will not wait uh, until you solve the exercise, but uh, okay, you may come up with a strategy, take the rightmost piece, okay, if among the rightmost pieces there may be empty pieces, just one point, then okay, you take, you modify it, you say, okay, we take the rightmost piece, which is non-empty, and so every player wants to take the rightmost non-empty piece, and somehow it contradicts the theorem. And uh, the exercise is to find uh, uh, is to find uh, somehow why it does not contradict the theorem. I just hint that uh, the uh, preference sets, the sets, those sets like this, are all open or all closed. I mean, this is a 
This is actually assumed in Gale's theorem, which is not, not written here, but open or closed must be here. Not mentioned, but it is important. Okay, so the uh, newer results just, uh, well, they follow the natural way. Uh, what, if, what if we want to do what David Gale do, did and uh, we want to do it for the situations when, okay, the partitions of the segment. So, of course, if we have n players and partition a segment into n non-empty, non non-degenerate non parts, then every player has to take a non-degenerate part, of course. But otherwise, for example, if we have five players, but the partition is only in four segments, and some segment is somewhat degenerate, maybe sitting here in, in one point, uh, then in, in such situation, a player may be allowed to, to prefer the empty part. So degenerate or empty, I, I have told you in the beginning that in this setting, degenerate and empty is, the, is basically the same. So if, what if a player may prefer a, an empty part? So this, uh, this question was asked by Resigal Halevi and actually uh, and, and was asked and was answered in this particular case of three players. So in three players, okay, if I will show you the pictures and this is a question about a triangle and some closed subsets of triangle and one has to do something with them and but figure out how to work. So three players is a good case to start with. You may just check your conjectures in this case and uh, in a very easy way. But in, no, not that easy. Uh, Friedrich Meunier, Shiraz uh, a bit later, after, after learning about this question, I think, they came up with a non-trivial result that for four players and for prime number of players it works, which is already non-trivial because many players you cannot just somehow do it very visually, like uh, for three players. Okay, and after that, uh, okay, after that, uh, there appear the results of Sergei Avakumov and myself. And uh, <clears throat> but now I, I just uh, here uh, remind the assumptions. So, okay, empty or degenerate pieces are not distinguished. So we have a closed set of okay. Let it be closed. All, all of those sets of preferences are closed, or otherwise we cannot do anything. And the player is allowed to prefer empty or, or degenerate piece only when the player is presented with a partition into less than less than n pieces, or otherwise it would make no sense. Okay, so our result now is continuing the previous two results is that actually if n is a prime power and p to alpha. It is always possible to partition a segment. Some parts may be empty, might be degenerate, but we will have n parts, some degenerate, some not, give them to the players, and every player will be satisfied, even if the players are very crazy. Crazy in the sense I introduced uh, somehow in the previous. So any, any sort of preference of the players uh, will be served this way. But if n is not a prime power, the answer is opposite, actually. Uh, we present a certain an instance of the problem with, with no solution. So in this instance, okay, it comes from topology, it comes from sort of equivalent maps or what we call their pseudo-equivalent maps. Uh, certain map of a sphere into a sphere of zero degree. It, it, this map is quite complicated. The coordinates of this map may be considered as functions. So those functions are used to rate the parts, but the, every function is not only dependent on its part, but it depends on the whole partition. So somehow, uh, okay, let me just some say it is partitioned into segments, but first function, it raises the first segment, but it depends not only the first segment, but it depends on everything. And so the end function also depends on everything. It, it is okay if we allow the players to use some crazy methods of choosing the best uh, segment, then they may use such functions, which not only depend on the individual segment, but also depend on the neighboring segments and all, all, on all the segments and the partition, in fact. 
And our counterexample is of this form. So this is the same set of functions for every player, and but uh, this set of functions has a property that we cannot find the partition such that all those numbers are equal. And uh, uh, hence, we cannot satisfy all the players. There is no way. Okay, now we, I have quite a little time left, and now I will just sketch. Okay, I, I will sketch the proofs, I mean, in a very basic fashion, and after that I will show the links to, uh, to read if you're interested. So, okay, uh, it is easy to parameterize the partitions of a segment by a uh, unit simplex like this. So, uh, n numbers non-negative and the sum is one. So the segment is partitioned then into such segments. Some of them may be degenerate, as you see. If some ti is zero, then the segment number i is degenerate. But this is okay. We just, we are interested in those. Okay. A less natural configuration space. Okay, the, this configuration space was criticized by the reviewers of our last paper on this topic, so I, I skip it. So, I mean, it is too complicated. The less complicated configuration spaces will be presented by Gaine, right? Yeah, <laughs> okay. So, Gaine will speak about less complicated, but different configuration. I mean, no, 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 not that simple like the simplex, but maybe not that complicated like this one, which some configuration space, which is very interesting for for those who do who do topology, but maybe too complicated for, for those who do mathematical economics. So Gail's idea, basically, considering closed sets allows to somehow uh, move the problem from the from the point sets to functions. So we have several functions. Uh, we have several functions given a partition of unity. So every player has a partition of unity, I would say. Uh, well, I have no time to comment, but just this is very briefly. And we average all those partitions of unity and obtain one set of functions, which is not uh, cannot be modeled as a set of uh, as subsets, but only functions. And Gail says, OK, what if this, these functions may be for a partition, we may equalize all those functions, then we actually solve the problem. Why? Because G is a matrix of functions and F is sum over, say over column or over row, I don't remember. And uh, the sum over what, over row is fixed, it is always one, but those sums are F1, F2, Fn. If we equalize, if we make them equal, then we obtain a, say, stochastic matrix or doubly stochastic matrix, what is the right term? We obtain a stochastic matrix. And this is a so elementary theorem of Dirkhoff and von Neyman that says that in such a stochastic matrix, it is possible to find the permutations with all positive entries. OK. If we have a permutation with all positive entries, it basically means that we have an assignment of the parts to the players such that every player is satisfied. I mean, of course, there is some going to the limit and everything. So basically, everything gets reduced to considering uh, maps to of this simplex to Rn and uh, trying to hit the diagonal in Rn. So diagonal consists of such vectors. So for re repeating the same number. So then this is a problem of topology, and uh, now we consider the map. In Gale's situation, this map also had a certain uh, a certain boundary conditions. The boundary of the simplex is mapped in a certain way. So actually, if we, if it, this map does not touch the oh delta, okay, delta is the simplex, and here delta is the diagonal. Yeah, so it does not touch the diagonal. It goes to the quotient space, in this quotient space there resides some other simplex, so it may be considered as a map from simplex to simplex, such that every phase goes to the same phase. And uh, under this assumption, Gale's, Gale proves that uh, somehow such a map hits uh, the center of the simplex, which actually belongs to the diagonal. Gale says that this is obvious, but it is not quite obvious. It is what mathematicians call Knoster-Kuratovsky-Mazurkevich theorem, Sperner's lemma, and other kind of 
old and well-developed stuff, but very useful in these kind of problems. Okay. Uh, and, uh, well, in our proof, we handle some degenerate segments, and this is very interesting. This We define some pseudo-equivariant maps, which means that the assumptions, we still have a map of simplex, to, maybe to simplex or maybe to Rn quotient by the diagonal, but this map has certain, still has certain restrictions, no, no, not at, as good, uh, those good restrictions in Gale statement, but also, but there exist some restrictions. For example, this map here and this map here is defined similarly because somehow those partitions only differ by a degenerate segment, but degenerate segments are uh, somehow ignored by the players. So this map here and this map here are connected one to other, and, and here also. So somehow we use those oriented segments, and here, here, and here, uh, the map is basically the same. No, 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 not the same, but a permutation of the same map. So this map has coordinates, coordinates to permute. And this, uh, this is what we call pseudo equivalent assumption, and it allowed us to prove the positive result and to give a crazy counter example. Okay, so here, okay, I, I skipped this all because this is a description of the proof and it is not completely trivial. But uh, okay, our paper has been published already and it is on archive and you may take a look. This is the, okay, the pictures you have seen in Arkady's talk. It, it is used in building the counter example. Uh, so for equivalent or maybe pseudo equivalent maps like that. Okay, so it's quite a big discussion afterwards, but. Okay, so the, uh, okay, now I only give the links to, for, for further reading. You see we have, okay, we have written five papers already. This paper is now being somehow uh, being refereed and we, we are planning to simplify the argument there. So don't read this. Uh, I mean, the, don't read it right now. Uh, so this, this will be simplified greatly. <laughs> I mean, it will be simplified using the idea of Rade and Gayane, by the way, uh, because somehow in your configuration space it is much easier. And uh, people who refer it, who review this paper, they say that uh, we need an an easy explanation for economists, and somehow we uh, we, we will build upon your construction. I mean, I would say. I, I mean, we, we have discussed it. I mean, that, but uh, previously we only put one one paragraph uh, that it can be done this way. But uh, I think. In the in the in the newer version of this paper, we need to to to, buy, to use only this because the, that uh, the, the other approach was considered complicated by by the by the reviewers. Okay, so so some work still continues, and as, as you have seen, actually there are many possible versions of the problem, and somehow this addresses case one with one utility function. And it is still not not obvious. Okay, okay, I'm ready to answer some questions. Thank you very much for your talk. Please, questions and remarks. And first of all, I want to, to make a remark. I want to say that mm -hmm. this so-called complicated configuration space I like very much. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, the topologists do like it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a smart way of parameterizing the partitions of the segment. And uh, yes, I understand for economists it is maybe not so so good, but for us it is already familiar from other from other problems. And it yes, is... of course, but but actually the, the main the main observation was that in order to understand your small paper, we need to read some big paper of Blagovich and Sigler. We also need to read some other references in that paper and so on. So somehow the economists don't, don't want to read <laughs> that much. It's also, it's a famous space because it was studied by Arnold, as, as you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for mathematicians, uh, there is no problem. It is a beloved yeah, yeah. object, I would say. <laughs> Yes, this is a classical thing, but uh, but uh, okay for for economists. Okay, and, and fortunately we have a new, I mean, a new observation of yours, which which actually helps, mm -hmm. so that, that, that the configuration space can be built uh, somehow for, m m easily and uh, more explicitly. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 
Mm-hmm. So actually, okay, okay we have we have no time by, by the way. So, but okay, oh. everybody may look at those references or may write a letter to some to some of the authors and so on. Well, we, but we, we uh, if anybody has a, a question, please ask a short one. Uh, well, if not, then let us resume as soon as the next speaker will be ready with his slides. <laughs>